more than one class a year, or do you all just you do teach some of you teach more than one? Okay, that's quite a bit. All right, so uh, we're going to probably bleed over into some of the other panels. Uh, I just don't think we can keep from it. But uh, let's try to keep in mind the topic is understanding definitions. And uh, I think for some of you newer guys, uh, if you don't understand some of these definitions, I think that you should ask the panel to uh, get, I think we have enough ladies with us that we can form a line or a wave or something like that, and uh, we can walk it and show you how it should be done. Also, we'd like to make you aware of the fact that there are several uh, teaching guides uh, being published. There's, we have some up here. If you'd like to look at them, if you've never seen this one, this is uh, put out by Square Dancing, and it gives the mainstream, and it gives the uh, basic programs. It gives the uh, definition of the call, and then in uh, uh, there's some styling comments that are made that are uh, sometimes passed over that we really should look at because. Uh, like I say, I, I got a kind of an education here uh, this morning in about an hour and a half. I started looking through this book, and uh, I see some things that, that we really maybe need to change a little bit in my own in my own uh, way of teaching. And I pride myself in teaching good square dancers. I don't uh, I don't rush them. Uh, I try to move them along. Uh, let me just go through some of the things that I have jotted down. Then I'd like to hear a little input from you guys. Questions are fine. If you want to uh, give us some information as to what made your class better than the previous class. We'd like to know that also. Uh, you'll have to come up to the mic to speak because uh, they're taping this session and uh, they just won't pick it up if you're not up here. And I'm sorry that we don't have a mic back there that's a little more handy for you. Uh, uh, we felt that, uh, and I'm sure that most all of you would uh, agree with this, uh, if you understand definitions better, uh, you just have to be more effective at teaching your class because uh, there's just if the dancer uh, gets the message that you relay to him, then you're going to do a good job. Uh, like I said, if you have a problem with the basic that uh, you're maybe trying to avoid or you're just kind of brushing across it, we firmly feel, all three of us up here at this panel, we feel that every call on that list should be taught. And uh, it should be taught to the best of your ability, not just the ones that you like and are the ones that your area dances, you just have to teach everything on that list. Uh, the other thing that we thought, uh, I changed my way of thinking in classes this last season, and I think I came up with the best class I've ever had. I'm really proud of them. They're really good mainstream dancers. Uh, I used the method of after I taught the basics, what I consider basics, I started moving on to the frequency of the calls in mainstream and teaching them first. Because in our area, I have to start my class about the 1st of November, and then I have to graduate the class before the last of March because they're leaving to go home. But we do teach the class twice a week, so they come on a Tuesday afternoon and a Thursday afternoon, plus we have a mainstream plus one and two leader that has a pr uh, practice tape session for our class once a week, so our class is dancing three times a week. And so I think we figured it up. It was close to 60, 60 lessons that they get over the period of uh, winter in Mesa. And we feel like that we have the best mainstream dancers that came out of the whole crop this year down there. But um, I think maybe one of the reasons why was because I, I changed my thought. I've always tried to teach with the color lab list, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on and so forth. And I did that through the basics. But after I got through, I think we said turn through. After we got through about basic number 51, maybe 52, I'd have to look. Then I started teaching a little bit differently. I thought scoot back is used so much. You don't, you never go to a dance, you don't hear that almost every tip. So I taught scoot back quickly, uh, way down at the end of the mainstream list, so that my class had a lot of mileage on scoot back by the time it was graduation time. I tried to find the next most uh, used call and probably uh, recycle would have fallen into the category. I don't remember just when I taught it, but I know I taught it very early in, in the uh, uh, mainstream program. And so the dancers got a lot of mileage on recycle. And uh, they already, I had taught fold previously and, and uh, cross fold. So it was no problem for them to learn to recycle. In the case of the uh, scoot back, after we finished turn through, what, what basic is turn through, Tom? 50? 
Okay, after turn two, my dancers had already learned how to circulate, split circulate. So now we introduce turn, uh, scoot and scoot back to them and by telling them that those facing in do a turn through and those facing out do a split circulate. And it took just about 30 seconds for them to see that. And they did it fine. And uh, the, uh, but I, I do, I've, I think Bill Davis is the guy that changed my thinking on frequency. I talked to him about it before I taught this class. And uh, uh, they run a survey, I think, up in the uh, uh, Bay Area. And they, it was really kind of amazing, the frequency of some of the calls. In the previous, you know, you teach your class, and right at the end of the class, you're teaching the calls that are most frequently used. <laughs> then you graduate the class, and they can't go out and dance the calls. So I'm convinced that what I did was right, and I'll do it exactly the same way in November when I start my new class. Um, I think we need to think a little bit more about ends and centers and not so much about boys and girls. And I think I'm as guilty as the next guy. I think I pry, try to help the people by saying boys do this, girls do that. I'm not helping anyone. I'm, I'm getting them into a bad habit that's going to be hard for them to break sooner or later. Uh, we need to use a little more lefts as well as rights in setups. Um, in traveling, I find that in the last couple of weeks, I've done two big festivals, one on the East Coast and one on the South. And the mainstream dancers, uh, they could do a scoot back fair if I was very careful to have the boy facing in and the girls facing out. If I said head square through four hands, step to an ocean wave and scoot back, disaster. So, and that's a, that's a problem not with the people, but it's a problem with the instructor because the dancers are only as good as the teacher, the caller that calls for them. That's, only, that's what, how good the dancer will be. Uh, that's about all the things that I covered. We've uh, we got some calls that uh, I, I think one call we can really take apart, and uh, this, of course, would be way later on in your class, uh, after you have uh, gone through whether you want to do it the way I did or you want to wait until you get down to basic number 65. Right, scoot back to 65. So I actually, I skipped like from 50 all the way to 65 and taught that. And then I started going back and forth. And I didn't, I just picked the calls that I felt were most frequently used and I taught them. And uh, I had time to really show the dancers everything there was that, I felt they should know about a scoot back. And uh, we did scoot backs from right hand waves, left hand waves. We did scoot backs from the centers of a two faced line doing a scoot back. We did scoot backs from columns. So they really got an education on scoot back. And uh, we tried to vary it so that sometimes there would be a boy and a girl doing a turn through. Sometimes it might be the boys. But we didn't. We tried to vary it so that they really knew how to scoot back. And I, I really think those eight squares right now uh, are probably at, at the mainstream level, can scoot back as good as anybody in the country, and it makes me feel good. I don't know how you feel about your class people, but I always feel kind of like a, a mother hen with my chickens. I don't want them to get hurt anywhere. I want them to go out and dance and have fun. And uh, when they go to a mainstream dance, uh, I would like for them to be able to perform well and, and uh, as long as the caller's using mainstream, they shouldn't have any trouble. If he doesn't use mainstream, then that's something that's another problem. Dick, would you like to uh, say a few words? I know you got, uh, we're going in order of seniority here. This young guy between us, he's going to be last. Tom. <laughs> it's Dick Seaborch. I'm one of the short guys. I have to get the mic down lower. But uh, I've been teaching for some time now, and uh, I'm very interested in starting people out correctly. I figure then if they go on from there into advanced or other kind of dancing, they can do a lot better job. Uh, when they asked me to be on this panel, I kind of wondered exactly what we were supposed to do. And uh, I went through the basics list, 68, our mainstream list, and made some notes of the things that I think are abused in places where I have been dancing, not where I have been calling. Uh, for example, seesaw is a call that stands alone or it stands in conjunction with something else and the definitions are different. And uh, we wanted to show you one of those today. 
Uh, tag the line. Uh, I have a problem with tag the line because people turn to face the center and pass through, but they don't necessarily sidestep to the left. And if you look at the definition, it says you step to the left first and then you pass right shoulders. These are the kind of things that I think we ought to look at on how to understand definitions. Uh, Bob's approach is a little different than mine, but basically that's what it is. Uh, we have some examples we wanted to show, if we can get some demonstrators later, a little later on, and uh, we'll look at five or six basics and then we'll ask you for questions. That's about it. I guess I'm last, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some of the things that uh, that we said here earlier, uh, like the peel off, tag the line, and so forth, what Dick was just talking about, it, we found out in Pennsylvania that the collars are not doing what the definition states. In other words, they're just saying on a tag the line, like Dick had just said, just face the center of your line and pass right shoulders till you can't go no further. All right, it sounds nice, but it doesn't work very well. On the circulate, we ran across some, some problems that if you do a circulate from a left-handed ocean wave, a lot of callers don't do it that way because they do not teach it that way. And we found out that if you do a mainstream dance and you walk in and do a left swing through and have the end circulate, for some reason they want to do a U-turn back and go in the other direction. But also, when you do a circulate, you have to look at it that the ends, okay, they have their own little track on the outside, and they have the track in the center. Uh, so we're going to run down through some of the things. Uh, one of the things also we was working working with here was a curly cue, all right. Uh, the styling of it for the use of the hand. In other words, uh, the lady's palm uh, towards the gentleman which if you look into the mainstream book, it just has a picture with the lady's palm towards the back. Uh, so we're going to work work on that just a bit. So, uh, Bob, do you think we can get, uh, get eight people? We need four ladies and uh, yeah, four gentlemen? I think we should get to it. You go ahead and start Okay. Out. Okay, we need uh, four ladies and uh, let's get uh, four gentlemen, okay? There's two couples right here. Yeah, I'll do the scoot back or back. You want to do the scoot back? Doesn't matter if you want to do the scoot back. You want to do the scoot back? You want to do the scoot back? You want to do the scoot back? Who are the heads? Who are the heads, huh? Who are the heads? Take your pick. Okay, let's have... Uh, Let's have the head two pair, okay? Step in and face your corner for me. Uh, do a swing through. Boys run. Do a half tag and check a wave, all right? Now on a circulate, <coughs> excuse me, on a circulate now, if you're the ends, okay, the two girls and two boys, you're gonna walk the way that you're going. In other words, if you're the ends that is looking out, you're gonna be taking a curve okay around that racetrack and the people looking in is going to be on the straightaway they're going to move right ahead okay it sounds it sounds kind of uh, silly but it, it, it works to new dancers because they understand that racetrack let's have the ends circulate let's have the centers circulate everybody do a swing through and circulate and the centers circulate Swing through. Boys run. Do the right all through. Do a touch a quarter. Do an all eight circulate. Boys run. Do the right all through. Make an ocean wave. Okay, to save some time, everybody do a U turn back and get into a left handed wave for me, okay? Now here's here's the problem that we have back home is that you're, if you're doing a mainstream dance and a caller calls boys circulate or the girls circulate, for some reason they want to do a U-turn back. The reason is, is because the caller has not taught a circulate from a left-handed wave. 
Let's have the boys circulate. Let's have the girls do a circulate. Do a left swing through. Girls circulate. Boys circulate. Do a left swing through. Girls run around the guys. Bend the line. Pass through. Do a half tag. Do a split circulate. Do a swing through. All eight circulate. Boys run. Do a wheel and deal. By the way, I think of that. Doing good. Okay, another thing that we want to check with, Bobby did a nice job. Make an ocean wave for me. All right. One of the things we wanted to work with, and what Bob had mentioned earlier, huh? Can you get out? I didn't look who was who. Yeah, do a uh, do, let's do a swing through here, here. Boys run. Couple circulate. Girls trade. Do a wheel and deal. Sweep one quarter. Slide through. Square through three. <laughs> Left aisle of man, huh? Very good. Fix the square. Huh? <laughs> I was just taking a shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Good job, Tom. All right, now, gang. Uh, we were also talking, you know, I had someone ask me last night about the uh, split circulate opposed to box circulate, you know. And I guess we're always going to have this question come up, but, you know, let's have the head step to the center, turn and face your corner, uh, step to an ocean wave. Now, I feel, now, and I'm willing to let you take some shots at me if you feel different. Don't hesitate. Jump up and, and start yelling at me. But I feel in box circulate, uh, I can see three different boxes. I can see a box this side, that side, one in the center. So if I'm out there dancing and the caller says, box circulate, which one? You know, if he says split circulate, I know exactly what to do. I know that we split it right down the middle. So uh, I just can't buy anything other than that. Okay? Uh, same way, uh, do a uh, recycle, guys. Okay, slide through. Touch one quarter. Same thing here. You got a box this side, box that side, box in the center. So a box circulate really doesn't doesn't tell me a lot. In fact, I probably would, if I wanted the centers to circulate, I'll probably say center circulate. But to me says it all because I, I know exactly what I'm going to do if I'm in the center. So and I don't use the term box a lot. I teach it to the dancer, the beginner dancer, because some other color might. Uh, I don't use it a lot. Uh, boys run around the girls. Uh, let's have the centers pass the ocean. The others trade. Centers recycle. Oh, kiddokes. Now, centers, the ones that recycle. Uh, slide through. Let's get into the scoop back thing. Pass through. Touch a quarter. Okay, now, this is probably the most used position of scoop back in the world, right here. And let's face it, uh, we're all creatures of habit. Our dancers are that way. If we do it this way often enough, pretty soon that's the only way we can do it. Okay, but that's why getting to the point of referring to ends and centers opposed to all these boys and girls. I know why we do it. I do it too. I want to, I'm helping them, I think. But not really, because it, it hurts in the long run. Okay, scoot back. Scoot back. I do a single hinge and do a scoot back. And most mainstream floors would have gone down the tube right there. Okay, swing through. Boys run. And the poor girls scoot back. If you didn't lose them the first time, you'd have lost them then. Okay, do a wheel and deal. All right. Pass through. Uh, do a partner trade for me, guys. Um, is there anything you want to add to that scoot back? We about covered it all. Okay, slide through. Past the ocean. Girls trade. All right. Recycle. Veer left. Do a Ferris wheel. Center sweep a quarter more and do right on the feet. Put you back home. Okay. So 
and I didn't touch on the left hand scoop back, but and, and maybe you know that should come at the very end part uh, if you have time. Uh, it's everybody's got a different problem. Uh, like I told you, my problem is the short season, and but we solved it by having, in essence, three classes a week. So we keep their attention all week long. They have two with me and, and one a practice session off of the Thursday afternoon tape. And uh, we have a dancer uh, that's a very good plus one and two level dancer that coordinates that. And he's also a dancer that can, if they have trouble, he can explain this to them. I can't do it. I don't have time. But, uh, okay, thank you guys. We'll get some new ones if we need some more. Appreciate it. Give me a hand. Yeah, let's have a nice hand for our dancers. And they said square dance colors couldn't dance. <laughs> okay, now we'd like a little bit of input from you guys out there now. Uh, you've listened to us yak away here for about a half hour. Uh, if you want to take a shot at us on some of the statements we've made that you don't agree with, feel free to jump up and do it. Here comes hot Tom. No, you're not going to come, Tom? Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, I'll, you, since you're in the middle, I'll repeat your question, okay? Go ahead and, and ask the Good question. The question was at mainstream dances when the uh, person was calling that, you know, walk and dodge, boys always the walker, girls always the dodger. Okay, that goes back to what we're saying. We need to put a little bit more variety in there. Uh, I think maybe if we had more variety, we wouldn't have so many people at mainstream uh, saying, how soon can I get to the plus one workshop? You know, I can't keep people at plus one, uh, mainstream rather, at, at Arizona because they just expect it there uh, for some strange reason. They, they think that the next step up is that's, they're compelled to do that as soon as they come back in the fall. I said, well, gee, can't we just do maybe a year of, of mainstream dancing? You worked all year long to learn how to be mainstream dancers. Why don't we just take a year and really be good at it? No, nah, no, nah, we, we want to go. We have friends that dance plus one or two, and we want to go there. And if I say, well, I'm sorry, you can't go, then they go down the street to Burl, Maine. They go across the street to Bob Wickers. They go next door to Johnny LeClaire. They, so, you know, we have a, a unique problem. I, I know it's unique uh, with most of you. But uh, I do teach my dancers so that they can go dance anywhere. But I am compelled to say that other callers do not do that. Because uh, I don't know why, I don't know whether it's you know, uh, just being lax or whether uh, they feel like if I teach them too good, they can go dance anywhere. If I don't teach them maybe so good, they're going to stay right here with me and I'm not going to lose my dancer that way. But I never did feel like I ever owned a dancer. You know, slavery went out a long time ago and I never owned a dancer in my life. And uh, I just tried to teach them to dance to the best of my ability and hope they would dance with me too. But I also insist they go dance with other callers. Why don't you come on up? You've got a question. You can. We, we need to get it on tape. Due to some difficulties I've seen with dancing in California, anyway, I like to get the board's opinion or the table's opinion on separate versus divide, and or the combination of both. You want to come on that? Come on that, Dick. I had a problem with divide myself this morning, and uh, when you read the definition of divide, it says whichever couple is designated separates and goes one quarter around the square, waiting for the next call. And if you separate, you go around the, you still go around the square the same distance, and so they, the two definitions come very close to being the same. If you have a heads pass through and separate, they can go around and come back home and meet their partner. That doesn't mean that they can only go a quarter and stop. If you had the head couples divide and star through, they would only go a quarter. That's the way I would interpret that. And just from reading the description, that's what it says to me. That help you out, Charlie? <laughs> now, I, this maybe is not really uh, in our panel, but uh, I, I know that uh, uh, I've already told you how many lessons I give my guys uh, in equivalent. Uh, we dance, we have a short season, well, five and a half months. We start, we open our class up about the second week of November, sometimes the first. Uh, we leave it open for about 
a week and a half because we have two classes a week. We dance every Thursday afternoon and every uh, Tuesday and every Thursday. And then after the class has started and they're, let's say they're through the first 15, 20 basics, somewhere along in there, then we have a, the plus one and two guy that helps us out and we have a time for them, five to seven, Monday evening, they practice Thursday afternoon's tape. So they actually dance three times a week to me, twice live, once with tape. We figured it up, and I, 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 this word, the number 60 stands in my mind. I think they have about 60 lessons by the time they leave. Now, they don't have 60 lessons before they graduate, but after they graduate, we always try to graduate them about the 1st of March, because, and that's very short, it seems, from November, December, January, February, and they're graduating. So we're actually there four months, but they're doing a lot of dancing that four months. And uh, the retention is so great because that they, every other day, they're dancing the, the basic calls that we have taught. And I know this is a unique thing with the parks where we have winter visitors. Uh, and I know that I've gone through the, the things that uh, every club caller, local caller, whatever you want to call it, goes through. Uh, the club saying, hey, come on, hurry up, let's get them going. You know, we need these people. And uh, we got to get them in our club. And I, this is a bad thing. I, I, I believe that if I were to start learning to square dance uh, this week and I went to the caller and he said, how many lessons are you, we going to have? And he say, oh, 45, 50. I might have reservations if I want to become a square dancer. But if he just says, well, we don't know. We don't know how many lessons it's going to be. It's going to be until we have learned the color lab list of, of basics and are proficient at mainstream dancing. Then after I got started, I wouldn't care because I'm having so much fun. I, it, it's not like a class then. It's just like you can't wait till the next week to go. Chet? Yeah, that's true. They dance a lot, and that's why I say our, our situation is unique. Now, let's, uh, guys, let's don't get too far away from uh, the uh, topic, which is understanding definitions. Tom, you want to come up, Tom? I got two. One is we're talking about separate. Uh, let me get up here. <laughs> Uh, normally, I don't need a mic. One is talking about separate and divide. Separate. The dancers in the couple turn. The dancers in the couple turn back to back with each other and walk forward around the outside of the square. The distance traveled is determined by the next call. So, if a call wasn't given 64 beats later, it's true. Think about it they would continue to move around the outside track. Divide. The dancers and the couple turn away from each other and walk forward one quarter around the outside of the square to wait for the next call. And I don't see how it could be any clearer than that. How, does, how, else, you know, how do we use it? That's what it says. How do you use, tell them how you use separate when you're teaching a class. Normally, teaching a class, it would be separate around a, one person into the middle, exactly. around two people, Go back home, pass your partner, keep going around one more into the middle, pass through an alamand or whatever. Yeah, and that's exactly what it's saying. That you go as far as the, the next call determines how far you should go. Okay, one other, if I may. If I can find it. Where is circulates? Oh, it's where the diagrams are. <laughs> there you go. Okay. On... Uh, subparagraph G, box, circulate, starting formation, box, circulate. It doesn't say that it's from lines, parallel waves, or two-faced lines. It doesn't really say what it is. But it says each dancer moves forward along the circulate path to the next position using the general rule. Down to split circulate, it says that the starting formation is lines, waves, or columns. The parallel waves, lines, or columns divide into two separate boxes. 
So from that I can say that a box is four people. And the dancers circulate within their own foursome using the general rule of follow the leader around a given track. Thank you. Very good time. Yeah, Jack? Jack, Jack is saying, uh, defining the box as the square did up here with uh, a quick start heads curly Q. And now we have a de definite box in the center, and box can be defined from there, and that's what we all said. Uh, and then also, uh, if you define it from uh, a column, I guess you might say, uh, where let's just assume that we had a column and uh, we had the, the center's box circulate so it's defined as a box of four dancers Tom do you want to say something else I'll relay it for you comment on that. Now, what Tom is saying is, uh, and I'll quickly do this, uh, that when he has waves or columns, uh, he teaches that the only people that have the box group are the four dancers in the center, or if, in the case of columns, the four dancers in the center of the column that are uh, in the very, very center. And if he says from a column, box circulate, I'm assuming this is what you meant, that those four dancers in the center would circulate if Tom was calling to his dancers. Now, we got some Jack, I think, was first, and we got one over here. Jack? I personally don't use that concept. If I've got two parallel ocean waves, and they're boys on the ends and girls in the center in the standard formation, and I want the center four to circulate who are girls, I don't need to worry about right them. For me, right if those girls circulate, uh, it, it's more than ample to cover the, the desired formation change. So essentially, exactly, and then you can go to center and make it from this side. Sure. But then why do we have box? Yes. There is only one box. Okay. 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 Now, what, let me let me catch up, guys. You're getting too far ahead of me now. This is going on tape. Okay, what Jack what Jack is saying is, if you have an ocean wave, uh, uh, boy, girl, girl, boy, that if he wants those setters, the girls, to circulate, all he has to say is, girls circulate, and they're going to circulate. And uh, so he doesn't feel that the term box circulate is uh, necessary at that point. He believes that only time you can you really use box circulate is in the case of say heads touch a quarter, you have a box, and then you circulate. Any other way would be uh, ambiguous, I guess, to, to use. Uh, I think uh, we have this fellow here first. The way we looked at it in San Antonio is back when I can't step in and face the corner and touch to the way. Boys on the end, girls in the center. If you say box circulate or split circular, when you get through that, you're going to have two boys and two girls in the way. Because you're working your box, of course. If you say circulate, and that's all you say. All you need is circulate. True. But you have a... Okay, but... Okay, but now uh, we've got another theory from San Antonio, and that is that if he has the heads uh, step the center, turn and face your corner, step to an ocean wave, and if he calls a box circulate or a split circulate, they're identical. Is that what you said? Okay. But now, and I have to disagree with that, because there's also a box of four in the center. Okay, and I think Bill was next. Well, I, I teach toward uh, advanced dancing when I teach 
And I like the box concept yeah, well. because if you want to move the four boys in the <coughs> car class, if you happen to have them in the box, is as opposed to the diamond in the center of the lake. <coughs> I'm teaching my people, I, I would call a box circulation for those four people. Now, I may be doing this wrong, but I want them to know at least what the box is. You True. The box. Okay. So the four boys would be in a box, and I would say the difference is the box circulation. I got Lee and I got John. And Lee, would you come up to the mic? Now, well, because everybody's going to have to from now on. Besides that, we want to see you. Okay. Uh, what Bill is uh, in uh, essence saying is that he w it's on the list. And I, I'm like you. I believe we should teach everything on that list. I teach a call on that list that I wonder sometimes if I'm the only guy in the world teaching it. Partner Hinge. I not anybody can dance it yet. Uh, except at home, but uh, yeah, I still teach it. But I think I'm the only one, maybe that's doing it. No, Jack's doing it. There's two of us. Okay. All right. What Bill said, he do, he shows them a box, and he shows them a box circulate because it's on the list. And he wants them to know what a box circulate is. And here's Lee Cobb. Uh The the problem in San Antonio. I think you do have a problem if you're going to use box and split circulate to mean the same thing because they really don't. Uh, you have an all eight circulate. You said before if you have a box one four and you touch two wave. If you called a box circulator or a split circulator, it would mean the same thing. If you came to the New York area, that wouldn't occur. We'd have a problem. That's one of the reasons we're here is to standardize the whole thing. I don't really think we need the term box circulate. I think you have an all age circulate, and you teach it in terms of ends and centers. We're, we may be overplaying it, overdefining it. Uh, if you want the center for to circulate, just say the center for circulate. Or if you have the girls, just the girls do it, like Jack said. Because when you're in those two parallel ways with girls in the center and the boys happen to be on the ends, then you can just say girl circulate, box is not necessary. You're giving the dancers another thing to think about, well, maybe this is what he means. Because we have had, in fact, this is interesting that you mentioned that, Jack, because is Jack still here? Did he go? Oh, uh, we, uh, a long time ago, when we used to call together, you, uh, you gave me the idea of isolating the center four and saying from a column, the center four box circulate. I, I'm pretty sure about this. And then if you wanted to split circulate from the column, well, that was something you know, altogether different. But I think the term box could be eliminated. And if you have centers, you say center circulate. If you have an all age circulate, fine. If you have a split circulate, that's it. Thank you, Okay, we have John Sabalski from California. Uh, it seems to me that box circulate is explicitly a four-person call. And if you look at the preface to the definitions, it says you take your whole formation, let's say facing, let's say parallel waves, and you split it into as many of whatever formation you need as you can. For box circulate, that's the four-person box, and by God, there are two of them side by side. And it says you split them. So it, now there, you split it, you split it into as many of them as you can, and there are two of them side by side to get. Otherwise, you only get one unmodified. Yeah, I grant you there's a third one in the middle, and if you say centers box circulate, then only the centers look. But if everybody's going to box circulate, the way to find it is to split the thing in half, it seems. I don't think it's necessary, but it's certainly not ambiguous. If you look at facing lines, I can see three sets of facing couples there. Which ones do the right and left through? Do the centers, one, do, the centers do it? By God, they can do it, especially from sashayed lines. Good point. Uh, Brock, uh, do you think maybe... Come here, Brock. Brockwise, California. I really think that possibly, uh, I don't think maybe we might have a definition, a difference in definitions there. I think really the problem might be a difference in formation of where, uh, you know, a person where they feel that the proper formation to do a box or a split circulate is from. It has always been, uh, in my opinion, that a split circulate had to be done from an eight dancer column or and eight dancer parallel waves. And a box circulate was always done, and according to, I believe, the, the formation, the only formation that's really applicable to mainstream level dancing is uh, four person mini waves. And that would constitute a part of the only place you could do a box circulate from. So if that was the case, then if you had, you know, four persons in the center of parallel waves, uh, technically those would be the only four people that could do a. Uh, a box circulate unless you said drop hands in the center and established many waves. Tom, you gotta walk again, Tom. Last one. <laughs> On this subject, anyway. I agree with Lee Kaufman 100% that 
if we drop box circulate, there'd be no, we wouldn't have this discussion. As long as it is here, I think it has, you know, we've defined it each to our own taste. That's fine. One more example, though, if I may, an eight-hand column, eight-person column, normal column, centers circulate four, six, or two dancers. Two would be rough, but think about that. It's got to be more All right, so will you uh, come on up here this time so we can get you on the tape, partner? I'm sorry, I don't know your name. You can give us your name, and we already know you're from San Antonio. <laughs> um, Harold Dillashaw, San Antonio, first Car Lab convention. I have one question for you. Um, a couple of years back, one of the meetings we were having at our Callers Association, and we got into it like, like we are now, a pretty good discussion on split box. What's the difference? How do you do it? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The main reason was, and I was wondering how you all do this, we had a caller calling an anniversary dance for a club. He did a fine job, no problems. But what he would do is he'd have you in a setup, and he'd tell you to split circulate once and a half. Like he'd have you in, in ocean waves, parallel ocean waves. He'd say split circulate once and a half to get a diamond. Now, do you, do you agree that that should be called split circulate once and a half or box circulate once and a half? That's where we went around. And finally, we came out with splits. But what I was saying well ago is, what I was saying well ago is, is if you put the head square three, four in touch, and you tell the, the dancers in San Antonio to split or box, you're only going to have two things happening. You're going to have these two and those two, this two and those two working. The centers aren't going to be doing anything alone. The ends aren't going to be doing anything alone. You're going to be in your own force is what you're going to have. That's what I was saying. I'm sorry I misunderstood you. <laughs> Thank you, Harold. Anybody else? Oh, you state your name. John Lillian, Albuquerque. Um, let me see if I can get what I want to say here. Um, I forgot the whole thing. <laughs> if um, you want to have, uh, all right, box circulate is part of our vocabulary. If you telling people that we have a formation and we all know what a box circulate is, if you say too many waves, that's okay too. But a box circulate is it's unique in that you have four dancers in a, in a circulate track. And I say keep the term box circulate because it expands our vocabulary. We have another way of saying the same thing as too many waves standing behind the one behind the other. It expands your vocabulary. It gives you possibly, like Jack says, you have a unique box in the middle who can only circulate by themselves, and that's a box circulate. You've got to keep the term because it helps us explain a formation. Box circulate is unique. I can't see it any other way. Thank you. Thank you, John. Hi, Clark Baker from Massachusetts. I guess there's a couple of things I think that are worth thinking about is why we're having so much problem with box and split and circulate in and of itself, and maybe not with all the other calls. And part of it is, how many people does it take to do a circulate? Two, four, six, eight, ten. What if we had 16 people in a square? Ends up that circulate's a very versatile call with a very expandable definition. Whereas something like right and left through, we know right and left through is only done from facing couples, maybe from a wave. But it's only a four-person call, so there's never an issue from lines of four facing who does the right and left through. Whereas with circulate, you could have the end circulate, center circulate, boys circulate split circulate, and then we have this box circulate. Now box circulate, as John said, I think is very specifically a four-person call. Now I don't believe that where I've been, common usage for motion waves when I say is to say box circulate and expect to split circulate. I just don't hear box circulate used from parallel ocean waves. If someone called it, I'd probably think for a minute, I'd probably do a split circulate, but I wouldn't guarantee it. Now the place where I do find it useful is from a squared up set, if I have the heads curly cue and I want the heads in the center to circulate, I'd probably say heads box circulate. I certainly wouldn't say heads split circulate, although I've heard that used incorrectly. I might say centers circulate, but then I'd be worried about confusing the dancers because are the centers doing a circulate in the center or are the centers doing their part of an all eight circulate in that column, in which case they're going to run into the sides. 
Okay, now the other perspective on all this is, is this box or split issue appear anywhere else in any of the other calls? I don't believe it occurs anywhere else at mainstream. Offhand, I can't think of one. But as you go up the levels a little bit, you run into it again and again with other calls that are just like Circulate, and they can be done with two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen people. And just to name them, there's the split versus box checkmate issue and the split versus box transfer the column issue. And those appear later on. And hopefully, whatever decision is made with Circulate should be made with all of those other calls. I don't know if that cleared up anything. <laughs> Well, you certainly have confused them, not you, Clark. <laughs> if you can't beat them, confuse them. Okay, Jack Lazary is going to talk now, but I think one thing we should keep in mind, and I take everything that Clark and John said as uh, very good input to this, uh, but I think probably we may be getting away from the thing that we're talking about a group of fellows that are going to be doing a beginner class, and uh, we're concerned with uh, we're concerned with how we're going to teach our beginners to do a circulate. Okay, we have Jack Lazary. I uh, wanted to get off the subject a little bit and talk about some of the things that y'all were doing up here with your demonstration group in terms of the circulates and the split circulates and the scoot backs and these types of things. I have found that because many of these calls are relatively all position conscious calls, for those of us at mainstream dancing, we do use boys as ends and girls as ends and boys as centers and vice versa. Teaching of these definitions, are you teaching the basics to the people. Sometimes we need to approach the call not as the boy does this and the girl does that. But sometimes maybe we can best approach it by looking at the dancers who are the in-facing dancers versus the out-facing dancers. For example, in that little scoot back that we all heads pair off, touch a quarter, standard gingerbread scoot back. Why are they so good at it? Because they keep hearing scoot back from there. But why do the boys come in and do the turn through and the girls roll over? Because the boys are facing in and the girls do the rollover part because they're facing out. And if we teach that way, when we put them in parallel ocean ways, we still can have the dancer recognize that some of us are in facers and some of us are out facers. And once they get attuned to recognizing which way they are facing, it makes no difference whether they're a girl or a boy. They recognize the in-facer steps ahead and does the turn through, and the out-facer does the rollover part. And then we can eliminate many of the problems we create for ourselves when we're teaching by the definition. If we put them in the box one four and say touch a quarter, they'll split, split circulate for us till now until doomsday. But say head star through California twirl, step to a wave, and split circulate and we are, we are having problems. If we're seeing the same dancers across the country, and I think we're all running into these kinds of things. So by the definition, if we talk to our dancers to learn the definition of how to react to the call from this in and out facing, we can eliminate a lot of problems for ourselves when we change the formation for them to respond to. That's Very all good, I want. Jack. Very good. Very good, Jack. Anybody else have some? Uh, we got. Would you come, mind come on up and give us your name? Feel free to move on to any other basic. <laughs> <laughs> right about now. <laughs> uh, my name is Mickey Blanc. I'm from uh, Huntington Beach, and uh, I teach at Orange Coast College. One of the same. I kind of have the same kind of problems he has. We have a very short system. <laughs> And one of the things that keeps coming up all the time is cross trail through. And I'll give you a little example of how I how I teach it, and you can tell me if I'm doing it right or not. And it goes back. I got to go back a little bit of figure. And one of the figures that I, I get to feel like Bob that nobody teaches is a standard half sachet. They all, you know you call it half sachet. They'll do a roll over the half sachet every time. I want to know if, if, if I, the way I do this is so that I get them to what I think is a proper position, that I say pass through and do a half sachet. Does that end up getting you in the right position? That's what I want to know. And then follow the next direction. 
If I say do a half sashay, it has to, or do a cross trail through, you have to be followed by some kind of a direction. Go to the corner, around one, separate or do something. Yeah, go ahead, Dick. You want this? No, I don't know if you guys were in Anaheim when we had the fight about cross trail and cross trail through. Uh, we don't want to bring that up again. But, <laughs> uh, bloody that's a bloody battle. But if you look at the definition of cross trail through that is now Color Lab accepted, it says that you, um, starting formation is facing couples and the dancers pass through. The right hand dancer crosses in front of the partner to the left while the left hand dancer crosses behind partner to the right. The ending position depends upon the next call. So if you're not fast enough to call the next call, they may go all over the place. If you want them to be facing out, you better get that next call done, done in a hurry. If you want them to separate and go around one, they're going to have their backs to each other. Uh, if you want them to cross trail through to their corner, you've already told them to go to their corner. And I think that's how you interpret the cross trail through, at least that's how I do. And uh, if I want them to do a cross trail through and a quarter in and a right and left grand, you better call it to them in a hurry. Or they're not going to get there. And if so, the ending formation depends upon your next call, and that's. No, well, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. That's right. If I want them to cross trail through, do a U turn back and do a right and left through. They've got to be facing out before they do the U turn back. Then they can do the right and left through, and uh, I don't argue that. Yes, that's exactly what I'm getting, trying to get point. Has to be. That's right. You're going. The, the movement of the dancer st starts them to move, and I think you've got to stop that movement if you want them to be facing out. I don't. You have to come up and use your name because I don't know you. Okay. Just a minute. I got a guy right square. Sure. You want a square to show you guys? All right. Well, listen. While this fellow is uh, making. While, well, we can do it too, couple. Uh, while this fellow is uh, making his statement, well, we'll get us a couple of girls, a couple of guys. Yeah, I'm Steve Spurgeon from Sholo, and uh, cross trail through is one thing that our club wanted to bring up at this meeting. Because I was using from lines of four cross trail through and trade by. Now, I had another caller come and told me, told me I couldn't do it that way. I wanted to find out why I can't do a cross trail through from lines of four facing in and then do a trade by as soon as the cross trail through is finished. I guess you asked me that question. <laughs> yeah, by the definition that we have in our book, I guess he can do it. I, uh, I personally feel this way about cross trail. You know, it's amazing that we can have so many intelligent callers in Caller Lab who's been going for all this time, and we can never come up with a definite uh, stand on cross-trail through. Uh, I believe, I'll tell you what I believe, and then you can take all the shots you want. I believe in my thinking, when I do a cross-trail through at the mainstream level, I show them how a cross-trail through would be done if I would be calling it an advanced dance. I say it's a pass-through and I said, and I tell them the right side dancer crosses in front of the left. You do not change facing direction. You'll be facing the wall that you started facing. You will be half sashayed when you finish the call. <laughs> there used to be a call by the name of cross trail. And that's a left partner tag. And that's what everybody tries to do when you call a cross trail through. Uh, there is no pass you in a cross trail. It's just if you wanted to call... Uh, if you want to get the dancer to his corner uh, out of sequence, uh, partner lines, and, and you want to get to the corner, if you did a pass through cross trail, uh, two would be looking right at her, and two would have to reach over, but they'd still they would be back to back with each other. And I think that call was defined that way uh, whenever it was uh, originally written. I don't know, but uh, I've always, in the 25 years I've been hacking around, that's always the way it's been to me. Uh, you guys still want to look at that uh, two couple thing? Okay, well, we got four right here. Why don't you guys jump up? You know how to cross trail through, Bronx? <laughs> Can we have somebody take Bronx's place? <laughs> well, uh, I'll show you how the. Is it in this book here? 
What's the number? 29. Why don't you just teach us, Bob? 29. Okay, I'll show you how I would, if I was teaching my class. Yeah, say we're beginners, okay? Okay, you're beginners. I would probably, uh, in this case, would say that we're going, we've already set it up and you're going to cross trail through to your corner. I would tell you that, just like the, the Color Lab book says, I would say now, the call at the, the call after I use a cross trail through is going to tell you what to do. Now, 99% of the times at mainstream, the caller is going to say, do a right on left through or something. Cross trail through, find your corner, Alaman left. So you guys have phantom corners, and uh, you'll have to go from there. But uh, they're all set to do the cross trail through. They're going to pass through. Do that for me. Girl is going to cross in front of the boy. Boy is going to cross behind her. And then I've already given the command, find your corner. Now, the caller lab... Now, hold just a minute now. The color lab diagram, or the definition, has the dancer just about like Bob is. Bob, if you turn just a little bit to your left, and just about like that. It doesn't come up with anything, and this is just about right here. They're just about there, okay, from the diagram in the color lab, or the definitions of color lab. Okay, now... But I still tell them that this is the way you're going to dance the call at mainstream. Okay, don't accept this as the absolute because it's not. Because if you continue on, you're going to finally learn that if the caller wants you to cross trail through, you will wind up facing out. Go ahead and turn towards, uh, no, by that way, Bob. This will be the end result of a cross trail through. But like I say, that's a call that we've never been able to all agree on since uh, we've been in it. Harold? You better come up here and say this on the mic. <laughs> and then duck. <laughs> I only have one request. Roses, red ones. No, but there's a cross trail and a cross trail through, correct? Not now. Okay. No longer. Okay, this is the thing. There used to be. Now, when you say cross trail through, our dancers at least the ones that I've danced with and the ones that I've seen, they're going to do like these people just did. They're going to turn on you. Heads lead to the right, circle the right and left through. <laughs> Heads lead to the right, circle to a line of four, do a right and left through, cross trail through before you can say it. They're aiding for a left dollar man. That is what they're going to do because in the years, years past, when we were on the dance, when I started dancing back in 75, I was taught a cross trail through, find the corner, a cross trail, get ready for the hand. That's the way I was taught. Maybe I misunderstood or whatever, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'm just saying, that's what, that's what I see as a, as a caller, and that's what I do as a dancer. I got to tell you, this is some way to waste time here, as far as this cross trail business is concerned. We've been going through this for a number of years already. Why don't you dance a smooth, call a cross trail round one, a cross trail to an alley and left, and stop making a big deal out of it. Okay. Yeah. Give it. One more thing, I promise. It won't be long. Put your name on, Bill. Bill Gibson, Crestline, uh, Southern California. Uh, I just have one thing to comment on. If that is the correct formation that leaves the dancer in a diagonal facing position, I think it's a very poor choice to leave a mainstream dancer in a di any diagonal facing position. I think if it's that way, we better work on changing it somehow. Uh, we had uh, notes sent up. Please talk about the cross 
rule as applies to mainstream. Uh, it says right on the front of your definitions of mainstream calls, uh, Color Lab, April 1581, um, crossing rule, number six. Whenever two dancers are facing in the same direction and are required to cross, the right-hand dancer passes to the left in front of the left-hand dancer, while the left-hand dancer passes to the right behind the right-hand dancer. So that's what we've been saying. All right. Uh, Lee. Yeah, I'll. Jack has said, and I'll put it on tape for you, Jack. I believe it's a good point, and, and it's uh, it's pretty obvious with all of us that the two possibilities would be a static square heads right and left through cross trail through to the corner element left, or from static square heads cross trail through round one line of four, or from lines of four out of sequence cross trail through to the corner element left. And basically, I would agree that at mainstream dancing, uh, if I call a mainstream dance, I'll guarantee that's all I'm going to call. That's right. That's all I expect. Jack, you, you ought to come up, Jack. That's true. Okay. Give me your name, Jack. Jack Harden from Seattle, Washington. Seems like most of the stuff we've been discussing, particularly on cross trail through, I think it should be referred to the definitions committee to come up with a definition that the mainstream caller can, can deal with and teach his dancer. I think it's very, to me, to tell a dancer, this ending formation will depend on the next call I give you. I can see all kind of things happening. And I, I don't think that's acceptable for the dancer. I think we should teach them exactly how the call should end. And if we have to specify certain things, like Lee was mentioning, we did it at advanced level. We said certain calls can only be done from certain formations. Let's do it here, too. Hey, Jack. All right. Clark, why don't you want up, Clark? And I, want, I want it to relay. <clears throat> I'd like to change the subject a little bit. There seems to be something everyone knows, which is the old way people always taught calls, and then there's kind of the new way, which is more teaching by the definition. I've heard some concern among people that teaching by the definition will take longer and is harder to do and so forth. And I guess I'd like to hear some people who have used to teach the old way and tried to teach the new way and what kind of experiences they've had and whether it took them longer, took them shorter, whether they had better dancers at the end of it or what. All right, how about that? Anybody want to comment? Well, he's uh, saying the, the uh, teaching by definition opposed to the old way. And uh, I think possibly if I, uh, if I understand what Clark means, 
by definition per se this type of definition at yeah yeah right uh, rather than boys girls uh, in centers people facing in people facing out so on and so forth you want to comment about Jim oh, give, yeah. give me name, Jim Blackwood Quincy Illinois I never had a chance to teach quote by the old method so I can only give you experience from the new what you referred to as a new method <clears throat> and I have found that by taking more time in the early part of going of the lessons like say two months for 20 or 25 figures my dancers are learning concepts in dancing and now that I'm into the mainstream program I can teach a lot quicker because my dancers understand concepts ideas that we sometimes don't gather in our own heads until the third or the fourth year of dancing so I think that the answer is to teach by definition take your time in the early going and I think that you'll find that towards the end of your lessons you'll be able to move faster and you'll have better dancers as a result Uh, one thing, uh, when Jack's, while Jack's on his way up here, uh, you know, I really wonder uh, whether it makes any difference of whether it's a new method or not, because, you know, dancers don't know the difference. A new dancer doesn't know the difference, and if you start the dancer off by saying it's ends and centers, then that dancer knows that. Uh, if you start him off the other way, then, then that's the way he will lean. But uh, you have such a... Uh, unique commodity there it's uh, hasn't been spoiled with any bad habits up to that point and then uh, you do it the way that you feel like it should be done the color lab way and teach by definition and I, I see no problem at all with it uh, one thing I was going to say about teaching uh, I'm an ex-school teacher and I always felt that people learned as adults in several different ways uh, not every adult is attuned to listening to what we have to say and applying our verbal words to application. Uh, Triple M made a survey not too long ago. They were pushing their video equipment on, on audio-visual equipment and learning programs, and they found out that if a person stands up in front of a group and tells them what he wants of them, that about 17% of what he says is understood and absorbed and is able to be given back to the person who has been doing the instructing either functionally in performing a task or in following the, the rules of the dance game and I recognized that a lot of people learn better visually and that many times we can save a long time in our overall teaching view if we demonstrate to people what we are expecting of them by having a demonstration square up in front now we are going to learn a right and a left through now we are going to learn a ladies chain now we're going to learn a circulate and have them visualize and see exactly their part in their role and then review it verbally as they go through it and that takes a little more time out of our overall teaching time because the demonstration does take time Another thing that we are doing this year, and this is, this is ingenious because we're very proud of it, we convinced six callers in our area who work in our particular area that learning 68 plus basics in one season of dancing is by far too much to expect of the average learning individual. And that when they learn 68 basics, the first thing they do after that is not to dance mainstream but to involve themselves in a plus one or two workshop because that's where the crowd is going and that's where the impetus and the push and the pressure is and we've seen over the last several years that we've been back teaching classes since we went on the kidney machine that these people aren't ready for plus one and two right after graduation and we've been trying to come up with a way to stop them and that's difficult to do because you see you can't hold them back so this year we got six guys to go along with the program and the program is that we are only teaching 48 basics in our first season of dancing there is no way they can go from the 49th basic into a plus one or two workshop we have them locked out of the plus workshops and with the six callers we have between 480 and 520 dancers 
in a Learn to Square Dance program, and no place for them to go but to the 48 basic dance when they graduate through the summer, and then in the fall they'll start back again learning so that they're going to get their plus. We know we can't hold them back from that, but we're going to get it to them at the end of the second season of dancing, not before they have really even graduated and they've got their mind on the plus dancing. And it's working for us because we are working together. And number two in our area, we're fortunate that the callers run the classes. We're not being dictated to by the clubs that say we've got to have them. Now, until we as callers exert this kind of leadership on the dance program, until we fully recognize that we are losing too many people too quickly because we're teaching too fast and too much and expecting too much of these people, we're trying to teach these people in one season of dancing what 15 years ago we took three years before they got to that point because it just wasn't available to them. The vocabulary wasn't there. Or 10 years ago when they turned and they became club dancers in 15 weeks. We're still trying to teach the length of time and get it all in, and it's impossible. So if we teach by demonstration, teach by definition, and teach slowly, which is what Ed Gilmore said, and I used to argue with poor Ed, I said, are you kidding? These people are smart. They're in a hurry. But they have a whole lot more to learn today than they did when Ed Gilmore was bouncing around and preaching, teach them thoroughly, but teach them slowly. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. You know, uh, what Jack says is uh, is really nice. I, I wish that we could uh, hear that from more areas where there were six or more callers getting together and working together on a program like that and uh, uh, letting the dancers uh, dance the level that they learned uh, for a while. I know when I went through class, and uh, it was 1956, I think, and uh, we had 24 lessons and and that at that time, and I don't think there was more than about 24 calls, maybe 30, you know, but it, there wasn't very many. And, uh, but, uh, of course, times have changed, but I, I think it's a good idea to keep them in there. Bill? Yeah. Got Up to the mic, Bill. I'm Bill Stone, and I'm out of Bremerton, Washington. Uh, how many of you teach in lessons from a circle uh, with your people? Do any of you teach me? Wow, hey, fantastic. Uh, many years ago, down in a little town in Texas, Jack Lazary well remembers, uh, we happened to be there together in Beaumont, Texas, and uh, we were talking to a group of callers and leaders about teaching from a circle, as long as we're on this little teaching bit and te time teaching of class. And uh, I had a dance in Houston to call for the fellow the night the next night didn't realize that he had lessons prior to his dance and uh, Jack will be happy to know this too I arrived a little early as we generally do to get ready for a dance locate the hall etc walked in and they were in full session of teaching and Jack after that little session they were all in a circle and they were trying to use our circle as a dance routine setting it up uh, and uh, but the beauty part about teaching from a circle and I start the first night of class and the graduation night of class always from a circle any couple walking into the hall it's a little bit late can step into the circle in promenade with the others when they're in a promenade position or they can be circling left you can teach the simplest thing and the hardest thing for most people to, to figure out is how to get them into couples we used to say, uh, let's have the start here and number one, say one, two, one, two, one, two, like we did in the Army from Army training or Navy training. But the simplest way I find it to do is to have them promenading and simply say, every other couple step up alongside the couple ahead of you. And you wind up normally with having only one couple setting out. You're working in couples. You can do anything you want to with them, and you teach them anything that does not require all eight people. And the beauty part of the whole bit is everybody is dancing. If you're teaching a right and left through and you're saying heads do a right and left through from squared up squares, only the heads are getting time. In other words, half time for each. If you're teaching uh, right and left through in this circle, 
you have a hundred percent doing a right and left through or a star through or anything else. And you have the possibility of only one couple having to set out. Whereas in squares you have the possibility of three couples setting out. So anytime you're teaching from this circle, it's easy. The simplest way to get out of it, to give you the get out, is to simply get your couples facing the wall in the center of the hall as couples. Have the centers split the outside two, separate, go around one, join your circle, alimony left, promenade, do whatever you want to in the thing. This gives, since we're on the teaching part, I feel that many of you are using, I was surprised at the number of hands to be honest, but I feel that this is an easy way to cut down on the number of lessons. I don't, let me put it to you this way. I say the same thing they do here. We will be through with this class when you can dance the mainstream figures well enough to go out into someone's dance and not get clobbered. And that don't mean you learn recycle tonight and you graduate next week in no way. But uh, think about this teaching from a circle and using those get-outs and get-ins, and I think you'll find it real good. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. You know, I'd like to add a little bit to the, what Bill said, and uh, I was going to say this a while ago, but uh, oh, about halfway through our class, we put them into two couples, and we do a lot of things from two couple. And uh, uh, it's a terrific teaching tool. Uh, it it uh, you get them into situations that uh, they just a uh, wheel and deal from a two couple thing after you get to your line uh, at the first time they try it they just can't believe it because there was no pass through uh, I'm going to shut up we got about uh, six minutes guys yeah. I'm Chris Presser from San Antonio Texas I uh, don't laugh because uh, everything we're seeing right here uh, has been kicked around our college association quite frequently the boxes and the splits and everything but I think Jack said it. The key to the whole thing is the callers working together. Uh, I'm even scared to death that someone even talk about redefining these definitions because all of you know the number of years they've worked on these definitions to try to get them where we can all accept them. We accepted them a year or so ago. Last year we accepted the styling. I think if all of you will take this little book and you'll find the timing, the styling, and the definitions are right here in this book. And some of you are going to be very surprised on how much easier it is to teach now with the styling that you have now and with the definitions. For God's sakes, don't go start changing the definitions at this point. That's for sure. Amen. Okay, now, uh, Dick and Tom would both kind of like to wrap this thing up. They've got a few things they'd like to say to you. And before I turn it over to them, I want to thank you guys for all the input you put into this thing. I think we had a real nice session here. And uh, we'll let Dick and Tom have their uh, last final say, and, and uh, we'll see you all around. All right? Dick? Thank, thank you, Bob. Bob? Uh, I, I think I can make this pretty short. What I would really like to say is, don't be afraid to reread your definitions. I did that before I came down here. I made notes on 68 basics. It took me nine pages and two hours to do it. Okay, two hours, I think it's pretty well in time invested if I can learn a few things out of there that I may have forgotten. I've been teaching for 25 years, and the way we teach, when I started and the way we teach now, the basic definitions have changed. Um, I know my partner told me one night, she says, you're not teaching that right. And no caller likes to hear that. But I knew that if she noticed it, I must not be doing it right. And I wasn't. So I immediately changed, and I appreciated that. So I would just like to leave with you the idea that the definitions were published. Caller Lab did accept them, and we really should be teaching by those, whether we really truly agree with every one of them or not. Okay, if you have the idea that you do not have enough time to teach the basics, I would like to recommend that you go to Mike Seastrom's um, panel tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. <laughs> he and Mike and uh, Chuck Stitchcomb and Bronk Wise are having one on variety and not enough time to teach, and that's a good place for your input because I thoroughly believe that you do have time to teach it and teach it by definition. Thank you. You know, if I think if, if, I think if you would take the list of the definitions of the mainstream calls, and a lot of people, a lot of callers say, well, they work a full-time job during the day, and they're always busy. They get home at 6:30, 7 o'clock, and they have to leave and go do it at 8 o'clock, dance to 8:10:30, 8 to 10:30, and they don't have time to sit down and look at the definition. It only takes a few minutes 
to pick up a book or this paper right here in my hand and look at the definition between a tip. At least you know that those dancers are going to be taught by that definition and they are going to have it correctly. Regardless if you have if you're working a, a nine hour job a day and come back and do a three hour dance. If you take five minutes to six minutes between a tip and read that information on that paper, you are gonna have it made. Okay, regardless if it's the time or not. But I think what we ought to do right now, this is what we ought to go by. And these books we ought to go by. Nobody else but Color Lab. I, I think that's the way it should be. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we got a few minutes. Anybody else want to get a word in? Come on, partner. <laughs> I got a lot of money. I got a lot of money invested in. <laughs> Joe Johnston, San Jose, California. Got a question? Can you pass through from an ocean wave? I've got seven. Asked seven people since I walked in here. I got four no's and two or three yeses. Pass through from an ocean wave. John, you're shaking your head no. Come here. Yeah, John says step through. Yeah, you're already halfway through a pass-through. Anybody else want to say anything? The definition of pass-through? Let's get Color Lab's definition. Can you do a right and left through or cross trail through from an ocean wave? Can you, can, the question was, can you do a right and left through or a cross trail through from an ocean wave? Okay, then how can you do a cross trail through without a pass through? <laughs> how do we get back on cross trail through? <laughs> Erase that. <laughs> hey, guys, see you later. Thank you. you. You did a great job out there. Appreciate it. <laughs> you, I, know, I know you remember this. The old uh, Dixie chain on the, on the double. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be a lot of separate cross trail. I get your argument. Yeah. Excuse me, but this was a surprise to get this in the mail. This is your question. One, plus level. Plus levels. Okay. Is this definitely a set or